Good evening. Good to have you here tonight as we celebrate Good Friday. And uh, you guys sit a long ways away. Uh, you know, this is a special night because we do celebrate uh, Jesus' death on the cross. And uh, so we're going to be, Sonella is going to be reading some scripture. We're going to do some music uh, interspersed. And then we've got a video, and then I'm going to share a short message, and uh, we will close with communion. So let's open in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for sending your son. Lord, we rejoice in the fact that through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, that we can have salvation, mm -hmm. that our sins are forgiven, they're cleansed by the blood, we have new life, we have eternal life, we have a life that's more abundant, and we have a hope for all eternity. So Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise today, uh, this evening, and we rejoice in you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So now, Mark 15, verse 1 through 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate, to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was our self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate re release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Okay, if you want to turn in your hymnals to page 457, the Old Rugged Cross, page 457. Page 
soldiers led Jesus away into the place, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Serene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are, go who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. If you want to turn your hymnals to page 455, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, page 455.
at noon, the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. And if you want to turn your hymnals to page 118, Rock of Ages, page 118. <laughs> Yes, this is what is true. 
We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now, we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know that there is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven washed and saw it all, the naked humiliation, human flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails. Our sin stuck his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future, all in one moment. Bringing death to death by way of the cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. Oh, that should make you happy. That should make you happy. Yes. That is encapsulated everything. That's our victory. That's our victory in Christ. Amen. I've been preaching, uh, using the word epic duome in the last couple of weeks. Epic duome is a Greek word that's used in Colossians 2.15 where it said he stripped the enemy naked. He stripped the enemy of his power. Of his power. He stripped Satan. He stripped the power of sin and death, Amen. and he marched them Amen. through, like the Romans did. He marched them through the streets of Rome and naked and disarmed and, and people screaming, you losers, Amen. and Satan's a loser, yes. Amen? Amen, because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. You ever get upset when you read the portions of the Gospels about the crucifixion and Jesus' trial, you know, it's hard not to get upset because you think, how could they do that to Jesus? In fact, there's stories, you know, if you've heard of the Jesus film, they show the Jesus film in foreign countries, people that don't know anything about Jesus, and they'll watch it and they'll say, they're killing an innocent man! And they get upset because they're killing an innocent man. And you want to, when you read the scripture, you want to beat somebody. You want to beat the Pharisees, you want to the Romans. You just wish that you could do something. Yes. But you know what? It, it's, 
almost in, so incredible to think of Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, having suffered all these things, been beaten many times, mocked, flogged, nailed to the cross, and then hanging up before the world. And then you have people walking by and saying, oh, if you are the Son of God, why don't you come down off of there? And even the criminals mocking him and saying, if you are the Son of God, why don't you give us down? We were at the assisted living yesterday, we were talking about this, and I said, how, how do you reconcile one scripture that says that both of them mocked Jesus? And then later it says that one of them said, you know, and I said, time. It's all about time. Mm -hmm. Because this one criminal right next to Jesus, seeing all the stuff that he saw, had a change of heart and he repented. And he said, Lord, if you would remember me when you come into your kingdom. See, it was time. He needed time to see Jesus for who he was. Now, his, his friend did not, he did not recognize Jesus for who he was. Now, if it would be me, and Jesus said, if I wanted to, I could call 10,000, I could call legions of angels. If it was me, I'd probably have said, Father, send them all. I mean, send the whole works. Every angel you got, I don't care how big or small they are, you send them all and I want you to obliterate all these people. They're not worth it. Just, that would be me. But aren't you glad Jesus did, isn't us? Because Jesus didn't do that. What Jesus said is, Father, forgive them for they know, know not what they do. I got to thinking about this whole thing, all these enemies of Jesus. The Pharisees, you know, they over and over again, they were trying to find a way to kill Jesus. We've got to find a way to kill him. He is wrecking everything. And the Romans are cruel, vicious executioners. They were well, they know, they knew what they were doing. They, they were very well practiced in execution. Jesus' enemies, physical enemies, but did you know that before we came to Christ, we were enemies of God? We're enemies of God. The Bible says that we were enemies, that we were alienated from God. There was a divide there. And even today, people who don't know Jesus can act like the Romans and the Pharisees. But we shouldn't, because now we're, we could be called the friend of God. Just a few scriptures. James 4, 4 says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. If we want to be a friend of the world and we want to live like the world, we're going to be an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 says, with the Lord's authority I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. And if you could put, instead of Gentiles, the lost. The lost. We're all lost without Jesus. In Colossians, one says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God 
reconciled everything to himself, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who are once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Isn't that wonderful that through Jesus Christ we are no longer an enemy of God? We are no longer Amen. what Romans talks about for when we were with still without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous, righteous man will one die but Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, even while we were enemies of God. Just like we would have been standing there nailing Jesus to the cross by our sins, God was loving us Amen. and making a way of reconciliation. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall now be saved by his life. Ephesians says that we once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Isn't it good through Jesus Christ we're no longer under wrath? We are no longer an enemy of God. But now we are a child of God. Amen. We are children of God. Which means we have an inheritance and we have a hope and we will have enemies on earth because we belong Jesus said if you belong to me if you follow me this is going to happen to you too not everybody's going to like us when we follow Christ <laughs> but oh the hope of knowing Christ Oh, the joy of knowing Christ and know that we're no longer an enemy. But now we're a child. We're a friend of God. That's the good news of Good Friday. As much as I want to hate those people who did that to Jesus, my sin did it. My sin did it. They did evil things because of sin. But let's be honest, it was our sin that nailed them to the cross. So we're going to sing the song, There's Room at the Cross for You. And that's an invitation for anybody who does know Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you're still an enemy of God. And that's for those that are watching and those that might be here that don't know or under the wrath of God. The blood of Jesus was a perfect sacrifice to change all of that and change us from being an enemy and under the wrath, but under the blessing of God. Amen. Page 338. Page 
So, if you're here, you don't know Christ. If you're watching, you don't know Christ. Today's the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can receive what Jesus died to give you. Don't wait. Don't wait. The longer you wait, every time you put off coming to Christ, harder it gets, more difficult, and harder your heart gets, and it's hard, it's going to be harder for you to receive Christ. Don't wait. When the Holy Spirit speaks and calls to salvation, that is the time to come. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. And as simple as calling on the name of the Lord, because anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who puts their faith in Him will be saved. Everyone who confesses their sins, repents, and turns to Him can be saved. And we then we, we call out and say, Lord, we, I want you to be not only my Savior, but I want you to be my Lord. I want you to take my life and let it every part of it be under your control. It's the most incredible thing you can ever do. We're going to take communion now, and since we're as few in numbers, we're going to have you all come up and sit up here, make room, we'll get you all in here, and then I can serve you communion. And this is open to everybody who comes
knows Christ, you know him as your personal savior, and uh, you can move that, uh, get to know what you want. And, you know, communion is uh, celebrating what Jesus has done, and it's between us and God, and then it's, you can sit, if we get, can we get everybody in the front? We'll try and get everybody in the front if possible. Squeeze together, you really like each other, right? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna like each other tonight, okay? Amen. We're gonna love each other. Can we get some more over if you can? Um, how about room over there? Is there room on that side or anybody else? Aren't you glad to be in church today? Yeah. Hey, you can sit there too if you want. You can sit right there. Uh, Lori's going to sing a song, and then I'm going to hand out the elements, and then we will take communion together. Because communion, when we take communion, is between us and God, and it's with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. 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 Churches have Monday and Thursday services where they take communion. Uh, we don't, but uh, we like to do it on Good Friday because uh, whenever we take communion, we're remembering what Jesus did for us. Yes. And so when we take this uh, wafer, the bread, uh, we're remembering that uh, Jesus' body, he was flogged, he was, by his stripes we were healed. There's healing in Jesus. Amen. And when, uh, you know, it's, I like to believe for physical healing, but how many of you know that we need emotional healing, mental healing, spiritual healing? We need healing in all areas of our life. Amen. And the term that to go into shalom or peace means completeness, completeness. Jesus came to give us completeness. Amen. And so, uh, when, you know where we're going to really be complete is when we get to heaven. Amen. Then we're going to be really complete. Yeah. That's going to be a great day. Amen. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for how you suffered. Mm. And the night that you were betrayed, you took the bread and broke it and said, Take it, do this in remembrance of me. So we do this in remembrance of you. We remember your sacrifice and we celebrate your sacrifice. 
and we thank you for your sacrifice. And we want to receive wholeness through you. And we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we used to do a lot more with pleading the blood of Jesus. We still do is when we pray, but the power of the blood defeated Satan. Amen. He defeated him. And and we rejoice in that, amen? Yeah, amen. How many are glad that you're saved tonight? Amen. That it's through the blood of Jesus yeah. that you're saved. Amen. And he defeated the enemy, yes. and sin, and death, and sin does not have to have control over you anymore because the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 We're no longer under the power of sin. We don't have to be. We can have victory. Yes. And Lord, you said that on the night you were betrayed again, that you took the cup and you and you said, take drink and do this in remembrance of me. And every time you do this, you know, we're, every time we're doing this, Lord, we're reminding the devil that he lost. Amen. And that we no longer belong to him, but the blood of Jesus has forgiven our sins and cleansed us from all unrighteousness, and now we belong to you. Yes. So, Lord, as we take this tonight, we just say to the devil, we, we belong to Jesus. Yes. The blood of Jesus is our covering. Amen. It covers us. And when... You, Father, when you see us, you see us covered by the blood, and you see Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for your shed blood. Yes. We rejoice and we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for coming tonight. Lord, I just pray blessing over everyone that's here tonight. I pray protection over them. I pray that your presence will be very real to them. And you will, your grace will be poured out. Your blessings will pursue them in everything they do. As they draw close to you, you said as you draw, as we press in and draw close to you, you draw close to us. So Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.